Good morning, everybody. Are you ready? We're ready. ready. Oh, good. We're going to have church today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No meddling today, Fran. <laughs> Christ hath, H-E-T-H, -H, redeemed us. Like I said in the opening, everything is in the past tense. If you have your Bibles, you go to Galatians, the third chapter, verses 10 to 14. The reason so many Christians walk around defeated is they don't, we just sang victory. Victory in Jesus. There's something about that name. Yes. See, the, the body of Christ for too long, they're waiting for some kind of experience, some kind of feeling. It's not about your feelings. That's right, come on. It's not about your emotions, which will shipwreck your walk with God. You get caught up in your emotions and your feelings, that's quicksand. Uh -huh. You know what you went back into? Your flesh, and you're susceptible there. That's right. Only in the spirit realm do you have victory. Because there you will see that you're a priest and a king. That you're the head and not the tail. Amen. You sit above and never beneath. And until you really see yourself, because he's already accomplished all that. It's not about you accomplishing. God's going to accomplish a lot through me as long as I'm obedient. Your job is obedience to the voice of God and what he's ordained you for. Galatians 3, 10 to 14. For as many are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by what? Faith. Amen. Not in yourselves, but in Christ. Amen. And the law is not of faith. But that the man doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath, hath, past tense, redeemed us from the curses of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We receive Abraham's blessings by faith, not of any works that you do. We have to get completely out of a works mentality. It didn't happen. It can happen. 1 Corinthians 15, 56, when he says the law, the, the law is not of faith, because it says in 15, 56 in 1 Corinthians, it's such a powerful verse. Guess what? The strength of sin is the law. When you try and work God, when you try and do works, you've opened up your sin nature. See, you're trying to accomplish something Christ has already accomplished. He's already overcome the power of sin and death. He's already subdued the flesh, walking holy and blameless under the law. The reason he had to live under the law, walk under the law, fulfill the requirements of the law, so he could break its power to keep you in prison. Yes, amen. When you get into works, when your mind says, what do I have to do? You're never going to see Abraham's blessings. It doesn't say go out and work your way to get them. It doesn't say go out and earn them. It says to receive them by faith. Because they're already provided for you, but you're not speaking that way because you think you have to do something to get them. The doing is over. Your job is to learn to receive by faith, speaking the promises of God into your life. Because like I said, they're not going to do you any good. Everybody wants to wait for the sweet by and by for something good to happen in heaven. Life's good now when That's you walk right. with Jesus. That's right. Amen. Life's good right here today now in Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 When he talks about the curses, it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. When you go back and read Deuteronomy 27 and 28, the law brings destruction to every area of your life. Do you know that? I'm talking spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. It says your crops will dry up. Everything, your barns will be empty. You'll have sickness. You'll have plagues. You'll have everything. Anybody ever read about the ten plagues in Exodus chapter 7 through 11? Those ten plagues can't touch you when you walk with Jesus. Because right. they're Amen. under the curses of the law. Amen. 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 
So when sickness comes knocking on your door, tell them it's not allowed in. That's right. Yeah. 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 Send it back on the devil's house. The sickness comes from him. Let me show you something. Praise God. Do we get it? The curses of the Lord are there. They're not on you. You're not to allow them there. I sat there and got a vision. He said, until they see the entire law, the curses of it, the judgment of it, the condemnation of it, the shame of it, the sickness, the poverty, the lack, the death, the destruction, until they see it on me, they'll believe it can come for them. Look how quiet it got. Until you see it on Jesus, you'll open up a door to it. That's right. He destroyed it. Why do you think it says in 1 Peter 2.24, by His stripes, ye were healed. You're not going to be. You were. What it says, He gives you the abundant life. It's because it's already there. You don't have it because you don't believe it. You're trying to work it. You're trying to earn it. What do I have to do? That one simple letter in the alphabet, I, is the enemy of grace. One amen. <laughs> I is the enemy of grace. Yes, Unmerited favor. Yes. Unmerited. You didn't deserve it. Amen. See, we were supposed to be put there. That's right. I don't care how good you thought you were, how holy you thought you were. You were a good kid. You're obedient to your parents. You still belong there if you don't uh -huh. have Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Because we have nothing to give Him for our sin. We can't buy it. You can't purchase it. You can't earn it. Hmm. See, we really, for too long, even people when I was a young Christian, you know, they were out doing all these things thinking they were pleasing God, but they were miserable all the time. You know, when I go out and I'm witnessing, I have joy when I'm sharing Amen. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> What's up? The world's coming apart. Thank you, Jesus. He's coming back. Yes, amen. Yes. See, what's the worst thing that happens? He comes back this afternoon. So, we go to heaven. Yes. But you know what? I know we have time. Because the massive salvations and deliverances and healings that He has promised me are coming, that I stood in heaven and watched happen in 25, 26, 27 years ago, it hasn't happened yet. But it's ruined. That volcano is just not destruction, but it's the glory of God emanating throughout this whole earth with billions of souls getting saved and healed and yes. set free. Yes. The devil's days are short. Our days are long yes. because we're going to spend eternity in glory Amen. and he can't ever come there again. He got Amen. kicked out. Yes. Our mansion is ready. Yes. We need to live for today, yes. here and now. What is God going to do with you today? Why are you looking for tomorrow? Tomorrow's not here yet. It tells you not to worry about your tomorrows. That's right. Amen. You know why people Woo. fear not having and not having money, not having things and what they need? Because they're worried about tomorrow instead of rejoicing today. Amen. Not rejoicing today. God's a God of right now. Forget your tomorrows. He's already written them out. We get so stuck in human time frames. He's outside of time and so are you. Amen. Amen. You're eternally born again. You're not temporary just born again for a season. You're passing through this earth. Billy Graham said that. He's the first one I heard say that. He said, this is not my home. Right, I'm passing through. Praise yeah, I'll go home to a house this afternoon. But that's not my home. Uh -huh. See, I've seen my mansion. <laughs> this stuff just doesn't compare. Amen. The White House doesn't compare. Praise the mansions God. you see on the sides of the hills in California, they're all going to be at the bottom of the sea That's in a couple right. of years. Yeah. So don't worry about them. I've been in all of them. I worked in Beverly Hills in Hollywood, in these mansions, pools inside the houses, wealth, money beyond measure. You know what they were? They about a bunch of miserable human beings I've ever met in my life. Uh -huh. So what good did it do them? See, they're worried about having that. I've got another home. And I didn't do a thing to pay for it, and I'm not going to build it. Jesus took care of that for me. See, I receive from God. My job is to pray and obey. That's it. When you get outside of praying and obeying, you're back in your flesh. Because He's going to tell you, see, striving, I got this. I'm God. I am. I am. When He told Tell him I am sent you. 
You belong to I Am. And I Am is faithful to every promise in this book. And stop trying to get it. Stop trying to manipulate God. That word just came to me. Don't be making deals with God. You can't make one with Him. you got nothing to offer but your heart. And when you put conditions on God, you know what? He's going to wait until you're done with your nonsense. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm meddling now. I'm, I'm meddling now. <laughs> See? See that word? The law. He put the law here. That is a chain. It says it's a bondage. It was to reveal sin. Okay? It was the tutor to lead us to Christ who gave us freedom. Not to sin, but to live holy for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Too many Jesus. people go, well, I'm going to lead a holy life. And then they fall before they get home that day. Because they didn't do it through the strength of Jesus. Until you learn to let His strength live through you, it won't manifest. That's right. If you think you're the overcomer out there and the overcomer doesn't live in you, you're living in human power, which is nothing. When I died and came back a bunch of times when I was a heathen, I didn't raise myself from the dead. Jesus did. Because He had a plan. But I know the finality of life that a lot of people don't know. I know how quick it can end. Because when I was dead and I came back, it's real, folks. It's as real as that it's partly cloudy out. There's snow on the mountains this morning. Yes. As real as we can see that, I saw death and I saw life. I saw the grave and I saw heaven. This stuff is real. Amen. Let me tell you, when you die and come back a few times, it changes the way you see yourself, life, and God. See, I know His mercy in a different realm because I didn't deserve for Him to rescue me. Look how quiet it is. Uh -huh. He should have left me laying on the ground. I was such an unholy thing. He should have left me there. But my heart kept stopping for five, six, seven days. Inside of my skull was cracked, all swollen up. They packed my head nice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then he said, No, I got plans. I got plans for this man. What you see is not what he's going to be. See, I didn't deserve that mercy. I didn't deserve that kind of compassion. And nobody does. No. we got to get back to, He loves you so much. Stop trying to get from Him. Let Him love you. Let Him bless you. Receive the blessings of health and wealth and peace and prosperity. I'm not a name it and claim it preacher. What I am is I'm a promise believer. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm a promise believer in Jesus. Yes. Amen. God yes. is so good. Praise God. God is so good. Mm, God is so good. Amen. It's in the past tense. See, you're never going to see yourself like it says in the promises of God that you're going to prosper in all things, even under your health, even as your soul prospers, until you can see He gave you that as a gift. That's part of your salvation. He didn't save you to let you to go sit in a wheelchair somewhere and die getting old and decrepit and bent over and, and crippled That's and right. sick and diseased. No, He came to give you life. Amen. Amen. More abundantly. He came to give you His life, which is Zoe life, the life of God in you. And I tell people all the time, why don't you just speak to your body? Why don't you speak to your circumstances? You've been given His name to use. Why don't we use it? Why don't we use the authority of His name? He says, when you pray and ask the Father in my name, I will do it that the Father be glorified in me. It doesn't say, go out and make it happen. It says, speak it. Speak it into existence. Speak when you got when you're feeling bad. Speak to your body. Say, "Go back to hell." Whatever you're trying to get a hold of me, where you came from, because this is the temple of God, and you can't have me. Amen. You're not welcome here. Amen. You can't violate this. Amen. He can't violate you. You're holy, sanctified saints of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 There's two words in here I want to talk about. No man is justified. That word justified means to pardon, to clear from guilt. Absolve or quit from guilt. Merited punishment, which He took for you. He took for you. And to accept as righteous on account of the merits of the Savior by Christ's atonement to the offender. See, the atoning sacrifice, it says He was the propitiation for our sins. He paid it with His blood. 
the wages that would have been taken, like I said, the slave wages they paid for Jesus was 30 pieces of silver. Uh -huh. That was prophesied in Jeremiah how much they would sell Jesus for, what Judas would, uh, the traitor would sell him for. 30 pieces of silver, that was a slave, that's what you bought a slave for. But you were a slave to darkness, you're now set free from the bondage of darkness to walk in the light of the living God. Yes. Amen? Yes, amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He who knew no sin became sin that you become. The righteousness of God in Christ. The righteousness of God moved inside of you. Amen. See, you didn't do it. You received it by faith. Yes. Everything is receiving by faith in His faithfulness. Amen. See, when I got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, the demons left. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> His righteousness moved inside of me. Yes. That's what gives me right standing before the Father. Yes. Because now I'm washed. I can lift up holy hands. My sins are erased forevermore. There's no guilt, no yes, shame. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Amen. that don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Okay, in Romans 1, 8, 1 and 2. There's no guilt. There's no shame. All the shame you were going to face in life, He put on Him. See, everything that was of the law, the shame, the, all that stuff, it got nailed here. See Jesus here with the law on him. That's why he had to walk under it to break its power to keep you in bondage. He walked totally imperfect. He's the only one. Huh? I love when people try to tell me, well, I'm going to walk holy the rest of the days of my life. And I go, let me pray for you now. <laughs> because you can't do it. Like I said, the woman we talked to last night, she finally sees herself as royalty. That made my heart so happy last night when that young woman said, Looked at this guy and says, yeah, did you hear that? I'm royalty. And boy, we looked at each other, my wife and I went, thank you, Jesus. That was a touchdown. Yes. Amen. See, because she spoke it. When you start speaking who you are, we have all those scriptures, 40, 50, I am in Christ this, I am in Christ that. When you speak those out loud over you, you know where it goes? In your ears. You know what goes from there? To your heart. When your heart and your mind agree with the promises of God and who you are, you will walk that way, you will live that way, you will talk that way, and you will believe by faith that that's exactly Amen. who you are. Everything Christ made you to be. Amen. And then you won't settle for what the world thinks of you because you won't care anymore. Amen. I checked this morning, there's only one Savior. Amen. Mm, amen. There's only one. Amen. 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 Galatians, in Galatians 2, 11 through 16, it says, We're justified by faith in Christ, not by works of the law, for by the works of the law, the law no flesh shall be justified. There's one justifier, Jesus. Yes, amen. See, there's only one. See, everything is back to Jesus. Everything is back to Jesus. Your whole life must go back to all that Jesus has done. You got justified by Christ here. By here, it happened. When you get born again, you receive your justification. No more guilt. No more shame. You're acquitted. You've been set free. Jesus declared you innocent. He stood before the Father and said, No, this child is innocent. The devil can bark and scream and yell, You used to. Yeah, but used to doesn't exist in my life because it got washed away with the blood. See, there are no Eustace. I don't have Eustace. Because they don't exist in God's eyes. Why do they exist in yours? Oh, getting quiet today. Metal and friend. Working hard at it, too. Mm. Oh, I'm just warming up. Cool. That word redemption. Now we go a little deeper. That means to repurchase. Repurchase of captured goods or prisoners. The act of procuring the deliverance of persons or things from the possession and power of captors by payment of an equivalent <coughs> amount, a ransom paid, as the redemption of prisoners taken in war. We're in a war, folks. Yeah. Why do you think he told Timothy you're a soldier? That's right. Why did it say put on the armor of God? Yes. It doesn't say put on, put on your, your dancing shoes and go <laughs> have a good time with life and party down. It says put on your armor yes. as a soldier of Christ. Amen. Put on the armor. As a soldier, you didn't join an army of wimps. Look how quiet it got. This is the time for Christians to rise up and walk in the strength and the victory of Jesus Christ.
Give the devil no quarter out here. Let him know that you're a champion. Let him know to whom you belong. Let him know that this word is your foundation and you will not be shaken and you will not be moved. Amen. When you know the authority you have as a Christian, you won't tolerate people saying this is going to happen. So the world blows up, it doesn't matter. That's right. You're a child of God. You've been redeemed. See, they lived in fear. We live in awe and reverence. The fear it talks about in the New, in the New Testament, I think in the, in the Greek, the word fear in the New Greek when they wrote the New Testament, I think it was a word, eulabia, something like that. That word fear, they take it, oh, i got a fear and tremble before God. No, not unless you're not saved. <laughs> if you're not saved, be fear and trembling. Yeah, you betcha. Well, we got a house full of saints in here, so we're good to go. Amen. No, but they live under fear. They kept trying to please God. Sacrifices, sacrifices, sacrifices. Man, they didn't last 24 hours, those guys. See, but we have an eternal sacrifice we're going to talk about in a minute. But that word redemption, deliverance from bondage, distress, and sin. There has to be a ransom paid. Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. See, your price has been paid. In Ephesians, it says you're the purchased possession. You belong to another. Why don't you live that way? Uh -huh. I'm telling you, so many Christians are waiting for their inheritance when you already have it. You just don't speak it. That's true. You really don't speak it. God told me I'm rich. So I see myself as rich. Amen. And I'll keep confessing the promises He's made my wife and I. We've been married 18 years today. Amen. Amen. That's a promise. He kept his promise. Yes. He kept his promise to me. He said, you wait for me, I'm going to bring you my best. I waited. I waited. I'm more blessed than any man walking the planet. I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven. Yes. And I serve God with a beautiful, godly, anointed woman beside my side that we've walked through so much in 18 years and we're closer now than when we started. You know why? Because Jesus said He'll keep us. Yes. And He'll keep us as one in Christ. He is the olive tree, the vine, that keeps my wife and I knit together in holy oil and holy matrimony. See, when people tell me in the world we have to believe the way they do, no. There's holy matrimony between yes. one man and one Amen. woman. And there is nothing else in God's Amen. eyes. Everything else is a perversion. It's abomination before God. And God have mercy on any Christian that agrees with it. You can never agree with the world we're living in. Because they're trying to force an agenda on you. That's why I said when we opened in prayer, the anger in them is getting so bad, the unsaved, because the conviction of heaven is here. Church, rise up, be praying. Pray bigger than big. Amen. Pray holiness on this land. Pray conviction on people. Because if they die without Jesus, they're going to go to that place I visited. Uh -huh. True. True. That's why they're afraid. Because they don't have peace. Right. You know why I got peace? Because I'm going to heaven. Yes. Yes. But you know what? I'm, my work is far from finished. But it's not my work. It's the works that He prepared beforehand that I walk in them. As He does them through me by His Spirit. See, the pressure is all for me. All I have to do is be available to the Spirit of God and my life is blessed. All I have to do is be obedient to the high calling that He's put upon me. You all have a high calling in Jesus. You are all a purchased possession. You are all chosen children of God to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation of believers. I want this whole nation saved. I want this government on its face yes. begging for God's mercy. Yes. And I'm going to keep praying that way until I see it. Because He is Lord and they are not. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. And He's given me authority as a man of God to pray that way. It's not in judgment but in conviction. Uh -huh. Because if I can be saved, they can be saved. The sad part is He's told me not are not going to change. Even in the book of Revelation it says they're going to be stung with poison. They're going to beg God to kill them. And he's not going to let them die. Yeah. Mm. And you know what's even worse? They're still not going to confess them. Yeah. They're still not. That is, the, the, when that hits me in the fullness of it, I'm going, Lord, show them hell. I've seen that. I've been there. I've seen it. Show them the reality that this is temporary here. This is temporary. 
See, we need to start telling people how temporary this life is. Amen. Like I said, if God tarries, I'll make it to 120. Because the you know why? Because the Bible says so. The Bible says so. Amen. And he says I'm going to be fresh and flourishing yes. for 120 years. Amen. Amen. Like I said, life's getting better. Yes. I'm getting healthier, not older. Yeah. The, the body can tell me what it wants. The devil can tell me what it wants. But I'm not in agreement with what they say. That's right. I'm in agreement with what he says. That's right. Amen. God made me a promise. And all of you, you'll be fresh and flourishing all the days of your life. And none of this stuff can take you. Amen. Or have you. Amen. Or be on you. Because he broke its power Amen. to touch yes. you. It, when he went in that tomb, he took the law, its power, and its curses and buried them. Don't give him resurrection power. He's the only thing that rised on that third day. Amen. He's the only resurrection Amen. that yes. power. They died yes. and got buried and sent back to hell where they came from. Only goodness yes. and healing and salvation and mercy and compassion and love come from God. Amen. All the other stuff is a lie of the devil in Jesus' name. Yes. You've been redeemed from all that. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm. Yes, Lord. <laughs> One of the songs we sang today was what? Thank you, Lord. 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 Psalm 107, 1 and 2. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Here it is. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Oh, Jesus. Thank You, Lord. I've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy, Amen. from the works of the flesh, yes, from Lord. the curses of the law, from eternal fire. I've been redeemed and yes, set free yes, yes, from anything yes. that's not of God. Amen. Everything of the devil got destroyed over 2,000 years. He took it here. We got to read Colossians. He tore his arms off. Yes. He rendered him power yes. in the spirit realm. They had such a party that day when Jesus went down and took the keys back. Uh, they don't belong to you anymore. Come on. They're for my church. Amen. Yes. The Amen. keys yes. are the promises in the Word of God of power yes. and dominion. Yes. See those keys? He showed me those keys. It's all his promises. Mm -hmm. It's all his power that he's given us back that Adam and Eve lost. The dominion they lost, he said, here's the keys. You rule and reign again. They lost that privilege. Yes. Yes. You've been made yes. perfect yes. in me. Yes. You've been yes. made righteous Hallelujah. in me. Amen. You've been made worthy Hallelujah. in me. Yes. You're a joint heir with me. Yes. You can't earn your inheritance from God, but you have the keys to it. Yes. The Amen. keys are the promises. Ooh. When you speak them in faith, they will manifest in the natural. Why do you think Karen's leg came out over an inch last week when we prayed for her? Not because of me, but because I know it had to come out because it had no right to be. That had no right to be. She wasn't designed like that. It'll be here on earth as it is in heaven. He designed her to have two legs the same length. Amen. Yes. Yes. So that had to be fixed. I didn't even have to pray. They just came out. Amen. You know why? Because it has no right here. That's a woman of God. She's a temple of God. God designed her body a certain way, and it's going to work that way and be that way because the book says so. Amen. See, but in faith, I said, no, sit down. Let's do this. Because I knew it was already a finished product. A done deal. Yes. It Amen. was done. It was finished. Yes. I knew before I got on my knees to pray for her leg what the result was going to be. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. I knew it. I knew it. That's why when I pray in faith, I know it. I know the end result. Jesus says, you're going to do greater works, Dennis, than I've done. I was rereading that. I just kept rereading that. I said, reread it. He says, now, tell them, yes. Yes. believe it, yes. and then I will do it through them. But until you believe you're called to it, you won't exercise your rights as a child of God. I told you, this is a prophetic healing ministry, fivefold. All the gifts of the Spirit are sitting right here. Right. All the gifts of the Spirit are in this house. Right. And part of the mantle that we have from God that's written on that scroll above us is healing. Spirit, soul, Ooh, heart, Jesus. mind, and body complete with oh, God and Christ. There's not one area of your life that He wants to leave out that doesn't be made complete in Him. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For changing the sermon around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So much for made my plans. <laughs> you got to remember the word redemption. It's so powerful. Colossians 1, 9 through 18, just 13 and 14. Look what Jesus has done for you. He has. Delivered us from the power of darkness. Has. Has. Past tense. Yeah. And 
conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have what? Redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 Jesus has delivered us from the wrath to come. Yes. Delivered, redeemed, delivered, redeemed. See, everything is past tense. I'm not going to be made into something. I got born again. Yeah. Yes. I have a new nature. Yes. I have the nature of God in me now. Yes. I have new blood Amen. in my veins. It's the blood of Jesus. Yes. It's amazing because when you're from the streets and yes. stuff and they say you can never give blood because of the way you lived and stuff like that, that's okay. I told them, I said, Take it because the only thing you're going to find is Jesus' DNA. Amen. The nurse looked at me and went, right. We still can't take your blood. I said, You just don't know Jesus. Amen. Amen. But once, once they know when you go to give blood and then they ask you all those questions, and then I spoke the truth probably too quick. I put it and said, Well, no, not really, but I would have been lying. Huh? So you tell me you used to use needles and stuff. Guess what? You're a marked man by the world. I said, I guarantee you, if they take your blood and mine, young lady, mine's going to be in a lot better shape than yours is. She looked at me, that nurse, and went, I said, you definitely don't know Jesus. And that's what I told her. I said, my blood's been purified. That guy and his blood, he died. He got buried with Jesus. I got new blood now. Amen. That's why I have new Hallelujah. DNA. And so do all of you. Hallelujah. You don't have the generation's bloodline before you. You have his bloodline. Amen. Hallelujah. Which is holy, which is healed, which Amen. is perfect. Amen. 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 Dick and I were talking before. We don't have heaven here on earth because you think you gotta wait for it. Uh -huh. No, you got it the day you got saved. Mm -hmm. Start speaking in Jesus' name. Yes. God wants us healthy, healed, and whole in every area of our life, blessed and prospered. That's his desire. That's why he came. Yes. There's no fear. Like I said, speak His Word. Speak it and expect it to happen in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Oh, we've been delivered. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm going to share something with you that He gave me yesterday early in the morning. Mm. It's amazing how it's easier for Him to speak to us when it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> when you want to stay under the covers and you're laying there looking at the ceiling going, it'd be nice to go back to sleep. But He has your attention. Then he starts speaking. I'm going to show you something here. If you got your Bibles, go to Genesis 8. In the Old Testament, what did they do? They built altars all the time. Sacrificed animals, whether it was burnt offerings, drink offerings, sin offerings, whatever, what kind of offering they were giving up to God, they were always building altars. It's going to set you free today. God's come to set you free today. Thank you, Jesus. God just wiped out humanity except for Noah and the family. So what does Noah do? He goes and built an altar to the Lord, a burnt offering. Now watch. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, took every clean animal, every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Boy, you talk about God saying, really? I know you. Mm, I didn't get one amen on that, Deborah. Mm. <laughs> and nor will I again destroy every living thing that I as I have done. While the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night, shall not cease. The rainbow, remember? They built altars in the Old Testament for sacrifices. You've been delivered. You've been redeemed from ever building an altar in your life to go before God. There are no more altars before God you can build. You know why? Because you have nothing to sacrifice. We're going to think about what God's telling us today. There's no more sacrifices. We can't go to God, look what I've sacrificed, really. That doesn't work with the Father. Because He'll tell you, look at my Son. Amen. People say it's not fair. Look at Jesus. He suffered a penalty, never committing a sin. To pay for all of humanity's sins. See, so from here on out, too many Christians build altars like they've got to lay something down. First of all, you shouldn't have to be attached to anything that's just worth laying down. Amen. 
Look, boy, we took the air out of the room. <laughs> I'm going to meddle, friend. You have nothing to sacrifice. You have nothing to lay down. If you have stuff you're, you're not willing to give up, that means it owns you. That means possessions have a hold of your soul. See, back then they went to God and actually He was doing something awesome. Thank you, God. You saved me and my family. Here's a burnt offering. And it was a smelling aroma to God because those animals came off the ark because they were without spot. Remember, He put the clean animals in the ark. So they had something to sacrifice when they got off. And He did it with joy before the Lord giving thanks. It's amazing how He said the imagination of man's heart is, is evil from its youth. They didn't last long being good, did they? He just killed all of humanity. That whole thing, did, they didn't learn a whole lot, nor in his family, but we'll leave that alone. See, you're born with that nature, but now you have a new nature. But stop putting altars in your life. Stop thinking you have something to sacrifice and to even lay at his feet anymore. There are no more sacrifices to God. It's an insult. Mm. Come by to God. It's an insult to think we have something to sacrifice. The earth is the Lord's and all that it contains in the world and all those that dwell therein. It's all His anyway. Yes. See, that's why Christians don't receive from God. They're afraid they're not going to have. God says, I delight in your prosperity. I came to give you the abundant life. I'll fill your home with wealth and riches. And, see, we got a whole, another couple hundred scriptures that talk about Him prospering and blessing you in every area of your life. So, if you're afraid that you're going to lose something... It's going to own you. You can't serve two. You can't serve mammon, money, and God. You can't serve both. Amen. Because money will put you in prison so fast when you're afraid not having. That means when God said, I'll supply all of your need according to His riches and glory found in Christ Jesus, you don't believe Him. We need some amens today. <laughs> See, if you believed that this is true, you would never question God. If you got spiritual questions, those are good because He loves to reveal spiritual truth to us. So we're strengthened in the Word and in God Amen. Himself. He loves to reveal more of His nature to us. Revelation knowledge of the Word is just, it's what I live for. But when He said, so much of my children, they got altars they've built. And they think they got to come up on this altar and lay something before me. When altars are done, they've been done away with, they got nailed to the cross. Because there are no more sacrifices. Amen. You have your Bibles, turn to mm. Ephesians 5. <laughs> it's cooking. God is so faithful. The Word is so alive. Let it live in you today. Mm -hmm. Let it penetrate your heart. Stop thinking you've got something to lay down. Stop thinking you can sacrifice something you can't. When God told me yesterday that it's an insult to Him after sending His Son for us, and so many scriptures talk about there are no more sacrifices, <clears throat> there's no more altars to come to. Yeah, you can call the altar here where people come up to pray. That's a whole different knowledge of that word. But the altars, they were talking about, they built these big pile of rocks, they put the animals on it, they said, look at Abraham, he was going to sacrifice his son. See, you got nothing left to sacrifice. And if you think you do, that owns you, not Jesus. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. I love this. Therefore, that means we need to pay attention. Be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and given Himself for us. Watch now, an offering and a sacrifice to God for what? A sweet-smelling aroma. See, when we, somebody here was saying the other day they, they were smelling the fragrance of the Lord. One of you was talking about it. It was Kay or somebody. Um, it's a smell like no other. It tastes like nothing of this world because it's not, because he's really not of this world. He was in it, but he definitely wasn't of it. He walked as a man empowered with the Holy Spirit. But that aroma of the last sacrifice. That's why it says in Corinthians, you, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit... You have the aroma of death to many that don't believe. That's why a lot of people, when they look at you funny, they make faces at you and they don't like you much. 
You're the aroma of death to those people. But you're the aroma of life to those who believe. See, we have the aroma of life in here right now. Because everybody's on their way to glory. See, but that sweet smelling aroma is when we smell that and taste, it's got a taste. It's like a perfume, candy, but it's the sweetest, richest thing. And man, when that goes in your mouth and down into you, that taste stays there all day long. Oh, Jesus! It's so awesome. Amen. But that aroma, see, he offered him who? Himself. It says the same thing in Hebrews 7. 26 and 27, go back and read 20 to 28 sometime. Now Jesus, he's the high priest, right? For such a high priest was fitting for us who watch who Jesus is. Holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. Yeah. Separate. And has become higher than the heavens who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once, past tense, for all when he offered up himself. No more sacrifices. It is finished. Stop building altars in your life to lay something on. The only thing you can give God, the only thing you have to offer Him, is your heart. Amen. It talks about the heart in the Old and the New Testament. What do you say about David? Don't look at the outside, because God only looks at the heart. In the Old and the New Testament, God speaks so much about the motives of our heart. What are they? See, walking with Jesus... It's not about anything else other than what's in here. Are we thankful? Are we bubbling up in the Holy Ghost like we were singing today? You should have unspeakable joy every day of the week. Yes, life's going to happen. Life hurts sometimes, and, and every one of you have been through hurt. You don't go through this world without <clears throat> suffering loss and hurt. You don't. You grieve, you mourn, but don't let it steal the joy of the Lord that's in you. Because we all go through the same things. It's amazing how so many people think they're the only ones that go through stuff. No, we've all got a cross to carry. And that's the calling that God has on your life. That's what picking up your cross. He doesn't say everybody else's. It says pick up your cross, your cross, not somebody else's. Because he's got something specific for you that you carry with you. That's the anointing he's given you to fulfill your destiny, not somebody else's. Don't let people into your destiny that don't belong there. For too long, too many Christians get involved with people that tell them things and flatter them and tell them how great they're going to be. There's not a great person on this earth. Jesus is great. It ends there. It ends there. When I hear sometimes these people going, this great and this great one and that great one and this great one, and I'm going, oh, oh. I believe that when I was a young Christian. I told you that. It gave me a head that was, that hot air balloon thing that they're going to have here in another week, my head was bigger than that. They told me how great I was going to be as a baby Christian. It got so big I couldn't have gotten this building. I believe it. You come out of the streets, people tell you you're going to be great. Man, you believe it. Especially when you led such th that thing that I was. Man, it just came, it was growing. And I couldn't see it because of spiritual pride. Uh -huh. yeah. hmm. One of the greatest lessons I've ever learned, spiritual pride is an enemy of the cross of Christ, folks. That's right. You'll go right back in your flesh so quick, and let me tell you something. The correction comes. I'm glad my Father loves me the way He does in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But you see something? It's done. It's finished. Stop with your thinking what you have to do to get God to love you. He proved it there. Stop trying to get from God when all the work is already finished. Our job is to pray and to speak things into existence. Those things that are not as though they are, they already are in heaven. It says that in Ecclesiastes 3, the 15th verse. All your blessings are sitting on a shelf in heaven. I don't care if you need a new arm. God's got one sitting there for you. Amen. So many people are waiting for stuff to happen. It's already finished. Amen. All that is judgment, what you're thinking about yourself. It got nailed there. See, I'm telling you, if nothing else today, get that the law and its power, its bondage, its sin, its destructive ways, sickness and poverty and lack, it got put on Him so it should never be near you. Amen. 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 The reason we get in trouble is because we don't do it His way. Amen. Okay. We got a couple of minutes. Not me. Yeah, you. Must be John then. Amen. We'll get John. We'll get John in this good praise God. 
what I'm telling you, until you until you get to a point in your walk with Jesus where you see everything in the past tense, you won't call those things that are yours in heaven into the natural now. Like I said, if you have a need this afternoon, what are you waiting for? Why aren't you speaking it today? Why aren't you expecting it now? If you're obedient, that gives you the right to go before the Father and say the promises of God are and speak them and expect them to manifest. It says the life of Christ will be manifested in our mortal body. What good is prosperity going to do you when you're living in a tent on the side of nugget sometime? How about that? Yeah, it's amazing how we wait for the end and everything to be devastated instead of speak. Like I said, everybody wants to be healed. Well, you're never going to see it until you already see yourself healed. That's right. That's right. Until you see that your healing took place on that cross, because that's one of the curses. Poverty is a curse. Lack is a curse. Discouragement, shame, guilt, humiliation, those are all under the curses. Why are you receiving them into your life when they got dealt with already? Oh, Jesus. Ooh, it is getting warm in here, isn't it? I thought it was just me and the Holy Ghost again as usual. We'll finish up with Hebrews 9. There were so many scriptures I wanted to say today, but I know you want to eat. But you know what? I had a full course meal from about 5.30 to about 8 o'clock when I was taking a shower in the Word. Because this is what I eat first every day. This brings health to my flesh and strength to my bones. This brings joy and unspeakable peace. This should be the first meal you have every day. You want to walk in the blessings of God? Put this in your mind and your heart. Make this your first meal. Because yes. there's nothing more nutritious than the Word of God to your body. Amen. Proverbs 4, the Word of God, when you meditate on it, is health to all your flesh Amen. and strength to your bones. All your flesh yes. and strength to your bones. Yes. The Word is. Where does the Word live and abide? In you. Who is the Word? Jehovah Rapha, Jesus, yes. the healer. He's in here. So when you're feeding Him the Word, your body's going to, uh, it's going to agree with it. Your body's going to agree with what you speak. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Your body's going to obey yes. what you speak. Yes. See, people understand something. When Jesus said, I've given you all power and authority. Yes. That's over your flesh, folks. Amen. you got to learn to speak to this thing. Yes. Because it wants to rebel against God. Yeah. Beat the thing up a little bit. Um, yeah, I go out in the garage and work out and get strong physically, but Paul says, yeah, that's okay. But your spiritual strength is what matters because that's what's going to carry you through this world. Hallelujah. Not just your physical Hallelujah. strength. That's okay to stay healthy, eat right, do all that good stuff. Yeah, for all this organic stuff in the blender every day. It keeps yeah. me strong. Yeah, that's all good. That's my part. But my main meal is not that drink first thing in the morning with all the organic stuff we eat. It's the Word. Amen. The Word is what's healed me from everything. The Word gave me new liver. The yes. Word gave me new kidneys. The Word gave me new lungs and a new heart. The Lord restored all my joints. The Lord lengthened my life the day I got saved. Yes. The Word took care of all my healing and provision. The Word does everything Amen. because it's a finished product. I'm receiving the goodness of God by believing and receiving what He has already taken care yes, of for me. You're never going to call those things that are not as though they are until you believe they're already yours. Amen. This ends more sacrifices right here. Hebrews 9, we're just going to read 11 to 14. Mm. God is so good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Remember something in 2 Corinthians 3.16, you're no longer under the letter of the law which brings death but the Spirit brings life. That's why I said, the Spirit of God teaches you His promises. Yes, 
See, stop studying the Bible like an education when you're in school. Let the Word of God, which is the Spirit of God, teach you. Bring revelation from the Word. And man, when it comes up, the Word comes up this way and in and down. See, I let God teach me. Because when I got saved, I didn't have the education or anything else to be some kind of man of God. Believe me, talk about being dependent on another. Oh, Jesus. I knew the streets well, but I didn't know Him well. And over 27 and a half years, June will be 28 years with Jesus, I'm learning more about Him every day. It's the most exciting thing about God is we can learn about Him every day. It's just, it's just a journey. It's an awesome journey. That's why there's such an excitement inside. You should be the most excitable, happy people on the planet. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know why we're not? Because one of the fruits of the Spirit, you've quenched it, and that's joy. You've let life steal your joy. Amen. I'm sorry the devil stole joy from me long enough. He can't have it no more. Amen. It's mine. Amen. Jesus Amen. gave it to me, and I ain't giving it away. Yes. Hebrews 9, 11 to 14, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with His own blood, He entered the most holy place once and for all. See, once, has been, done. The veil is torn in two. You have access into the throne room. Having obtained what? An eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. Look at that. See, in the Old Testament, that cleansed them of their sin. God accepted that as payment. But they had to do it all the time. And here, if you cross-reference this in Hebrews, it's talking about Leviticus when they were, they were atoning all the time. Sacrificing all the time on the altar. That doesn't do it. You have to see yourself as forgiven. Permanently forgiven. Because he atoned for it already. Oh, amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. For if the blood of bulls and goats, the ashes of a heifer, we went through that, the purifying of the Lord, how much more, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Guess what? Everything's settled. We have to have a life here on this earth where it's finished. See that paper up on that cross? It's finished. Yes. That stuff's not allowed in your home. It's not allowed on your job. It's not allowed to touch you. It doesn't have permission unless you give it. Like I said, we were sitting there last night. We went out for a bite to eat and got home. We're sitting there. Every commercial, that's why I shut the TV off so quickly now, was medications. <laughs> or lawyers. They come out with a drug, a year later they're suing the drug manufacturer, but the lawyers and the drug manufacturer, it's just a cycle. They all go to the same bank account. But what a shame that the church doesn't realize what's happening to them. How many of us, the first thing we do if we, we, we get a stubbed toe or we don't feel good, we're on the phone, what do I need to take? Yeah. I love what Andrew Womack said. He said it wasn't for doctors. 85% of the Christians would be dead. That's what he said. He said 85% of the Christians, because the first thing they do is call there instead of calling Jesus. We sing that song. Call them up. Tell them what you want. The promises of God says, in Psalm 91, no plague, no pestilence come nigh my dwelling. That means if it comes knocking on the front door of your house, tell it to go back where it came from. Yes. It doesn't have a right to you. When you're obedient and walking with God and you're under that fountain of grace that it talks about in Romans, we stand in grace. And I said it's, it's like a fountain, an ocean wave coming over you. When you're in there on that highway of holiness, there's nothing else allowed in there. Because He settled it all. He put it all on His body so it can't have you. I mean, it's amazing. Adam and Eve were in perfect health. They were going to live for eternity. They were never going to be sick. They would never. They still live what nine hundred years or something. Whatever they lived, they still lived a long time. I don't want to be here nine hundred years. Not the way I am. I've seen heaven. But the thing is, though, too. See, I want to be on, on this earth as long as I'm supposed to be. That's right. That's what I want. Yeah. 
Because, because then I know when I get home, I'm going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Because that, that should be the desire of every child of God's heart. When you see Him face to face. And we're all going to see Him face to face. And we should have such unspeakable joy just thinking about that. Yes. When He's standing there like this. And He hugs you and brings you into eternal glory with Him. Oh God, I've been there. Yes. There's no words I can tell you the joy I felt up there. I can't. Because it's not of this creation. What I just read in Hebrew. It's an unspeakable joy and peace that is not of this world. But you know what? I live in it every day. Because heaven, eternity is already in my heart. I already have that joy and peace living in me. I'm already redeemed and born again and sanctified. See, eternity, the kingdom of God, which is eternal, lives within me. See, we don't look for the kingdom. It's not coming anymore. Everybody's waiting for the kingdom to show up. It's not coming. It's here. Jesus says, stop looking around. It's in you. See, when you get kingdom thinking, when you get kingdom thinking, ooh, your life will change. Then you have an expectation of the goodness of God being poured into your life and all of His promises. Why don't you expect the promises of God to manifest in your life? Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially. Because it's a promise. Why are we not, as a church, expecting that? Yeah, this ministry gets a lot of spiritual resistance, but I like a good fight. <laughs> um, because now I'm on the winning team. Amen. See, I win. Amen. I know I win. You know why? Because he said so. He gave me the victory. He just sang it today. Yeah. I have the victory over everything I'm ever going to face in my life. I just need to speak it and believe it. Amen. It's just like the blessings of Abraham. They're mine. They're part of my inheritance. I expect them. I expect them for all of you. I expect them for this ministry so we can grow and prosper and make an impact in this city and then in this state and then in this country and then in the world. But I know it's going to speed up because time is speeding up. If you've looked around and you can't see that time is speeding up like it says in Daniel, the things that are happening and the things that are about to happen, this whole earth is going to go through a shaking we've never known. And let me tell you something. Be on the winning team. Amen. Remember who you were born for. For Jesus. You weren't born to make people happy. Although it's nice when you can. But be a God pleaser in these days you're living in. If you want to walk in the blessings of God, the health of God, the peace of God, the protection of God. Like I said, I was praying about something the other night. I was kind of struggling a little bit. Some things happened over the weekend. Not to me, but to someone else. And it kind of really troubled my heart. And I was sitting there, and I was just kind of sitting in the chair, looking up at the ceiling in the living room, taking a break from studying. All of a sudden, an angel walks through the kitchen. Looks at me, keeps right on going. I said, thank you, you got this. Why am I concerned right now? Amen. See, God gave me an assurance. Because when I see other people struggle and things going on, that bothers me because you want to do more. But sometimes you've got to give the whole thing to Jesus. I've done what I can do. Show me how to, how to help in this circumstance. There comes an angel going, we got, I got this. See, he, could, he gave me peace. Because I started putting something on me that didn't belong. Do I care? Am I going to do everything I can to get it right? You bet. But He'll lead me and guide me. Amen. Okay? So it was like He gave me confirmation. I'm with you. I mean, that guy, he just goes right... They get, it's cool with angels. They go right through the wall. <laughs> That's so neat. Well, we have an army of angels around us, folks. We have a God that watches over His Word and He'll perform it. You have an inheritance in Jesus' name. You need to start speaking those things that are not as though they are. You need to start sending the Word of God. If you got trouble with family members or whatever, don't fix them. Pray for them. Stop being a fixer. There's only one fixer. There's only one Savior. His name's Jesus. You be available to the Spirit of Christ, and He'll use you to help people. And straighten people out, get them on the right. Like I said, my wife and I got so blessed when that young woman said that last night. My heart jumped up and down. And she said it because she believed it for the first time. What a joy that was for us. When you pray with somebody so many years, you see them go through so much. We've stood with her, been there with her. It was just a beautiful thing to see. So Jesus on her. Man, she was glowing. She was just glowing after that. See, when you believe who you are, you'll have a different glow. People will know who you belong to. 
when you see yourself as Jesus sees you, as the Father sees you through the finished work of the cross. Remember everything in your life, put it in the past tense. Whatever you're needing in your life, I don't care what area of your life it is, expect it to manifest because the Word says it will. God's Word can't go back to Him, what? Void. It will accomplish everything it was sent forth to do. And that's in every area of life. God wants nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Jehovah Shalom, peace on you. So receive it today. Don't try and figure it out. We sat there watching planet Earth last night. I got up and stood up in the kitchen. I looked up to heaven. I said, who are you? What, the majesty of what he created, these different colors of fish and animals, these penguins that live up, uh, they live in where, the Antarctic? Where it's 60, almost 75 degrees below zero, and they huddle together to keep warm as, as they, they're keeping the eggs warm. How did he design that? What was he thinking? <laughs> it's a, and I went, we don't really know you, do we? I got so much more last night. I said, who, really, who are you? How did you come up with this stuff? I am. You ask a dopey question, you get an answer. But he's I am. But when I saw those colors of fish and how they survive down thousands of feet below sea, all this stuff we were watching, I'm going, we really don't know much yet, do we? He said, no, you don't. But keep learning, because I'll keep teaching. He wants to teach us something new about him every day. Well, we sat there and watched that for about an hour last night. It just so blessed me. We just got blessed at a restaurant. We sat there and watched his majesty, and I just went, you're so far beyond us, oh God. You're so much greater than great. You're so much awesome as nothing. That word doesn't even cover who God is. Words are just small. Because we really don't have words to describe our soon coming king. He's so awesome, so great, so holy. He said he's separate from sinners and so are you. That just came to me. You're separated from sinners. There's not a sinner in this house. Not one of you is a sinner. You're a saint. You've been redeemed. As he was separate from sinners, so are you. Oh, Jesus. All glory belongs to you, O Holy Lamb of God. You do deserve the glory, O God, the honor. You are the only one worthy. You came and walked on this earth, O oh Lord Jesus, as a sinless lamb. You put the cross before you as a joy in your heart, knowing it was the only hope for your creation that you made in your image and your likeness, and that's us. You knew what you were going to have to suffer so that we didn't. The chastisement of our peace was put upon you on that cross. The law and the penalty of the law and sin and death was put upon you. All the curses of the law were put upon you. So we can live free from the bondage of sin and death, of the curses of the law. All shame, humiliation, guilt, all that was put on you. But what was put on you was abandonment by the Father when He turned His back. So we will never be forsaken nor abandoned by you, O oh God. Jesus, you even did that for us. The Father turned His back to you because He couldn't look at sin. Because God, You are so holy. You were separated from Your Father so we never will be. You're so good, oh God. You love us so much. Change our hearts and our minds this day that we learn to receive Your goodness and Your love and the provision of your promises in every area of our life. That we never see ourselves again as fallen creatures, but ones raised up with a new nature to walk in victory all the days that we're here. Father, we bless you, we praise you, we love you, we adore you, we thank you for sending the gift, the only gift you could give us for salvation, your Holy Son, Jesus. We ask that you bless this food that it nourish us and strengthen us as we fellowship in here in the Holy Ghost. Come Holy Spirit and show everybody, give them revelation knowledge of how the Father sees us because we belong to Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Receive today all that you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.